Hello everybody, hello everyone, hello everybody with me today. With me today is guest Rob White. With me today is actually my wife Mallory. With me today we have Nick Patello. And you are watching Oakland Tobacconist. And you are watching Oakland Tobacconist. And you are watching Oakland Tobacconist. In our small knit community of an industry, the cigar industry, to every 1,000 Americans, one of them smokes. So it's a very small community. You have the consumer, the retailer, whether it be brick and mortar or online, and then you have the manufacturer, and then a new side of it is the media side. And the media is really beneficial, not only to the consumer because they want to learn these things, but also it helps the retailer as well. On average, most manufacturers will make a new release every year, so you want to know what that is. So in the last five to 10 years, in the spirit of education, there's companies like Half Wheel, Cigar Aficionado kind of started that in 1992, reviews on umpteen hundred cigars, and then the, the podcast media, there's interviews like we do on our channel. And so it's a continual, almost day-to-day -day basis of researching what's on social media, what new podcast came out, reading reviews and articles if there's a cigar that I'm interested in, trying to get a hold of sampling that or reading about it to kind of figure out where it's coming from. So it's 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 almost as frequent as someone listens to music or someone listens to an audiobook or even the Joe Rogan podcast. So what time I am allotted is typically inundated with some kind of cigar industry situation. So it's, it's almost a daily ritual. I think when it comes to starting off blind like that, and the unfortunate thing is in the climate that we're in politically, economically, it's hard to set up expectations. You can set up goals. Expectations are almost too much to ask for. <laughs> and so for those goals, um, I feel like some of the things that we have done well uh, through that two-year process, uh, which was always at the forefront, was um, education of the consumer. What I really wanted to do, which was started with just as simply as our our, uh, our price tags, where it breaks down blend info, is I wanted to bring the education to the consumer of understanding what a wrapper leaf is, a binder leaf, a filler, how those can translate between different regions and countries, and also what the blender had in mind. So like step one was kind of there. Step two was having those conversations with our consumers. Because we started off so small, some, some humidors say, oh, well, I don't have time to explain the cigar well we had the almost luxury to do that so when someone walks in the humidor we can explain why we went with the boutique side why there's a bunch of cigars out there that need to be tried um and then later when we started doing our live shows we could actually have those conversations and have the blender firsthand tell everybody who's watching and then we can have those comments and questions i've always wondered this about the brand or xyz so there's always the education at the forefront i feel, believe what we've done and inventory buildup when people walk into our humidor, we've got cigar boxes on either side, uh, almost to the, the top of the ceiling. When we opened, we only had maybe 20 boxes in that humidor. So most of everything that we've done in the growth financial sense has been expansion and pouring back into the inventory. So that when you walk in that humidor, you're not, oh, I had this five times this last month. I want something new. I want there to be rotation of new brands maybe have some of our older brands leave and restock with newer stuff, but also having something new for the consumer to try. And I mean, and I agree, it's a, uh, a student before a teacher because I don't know, I don't know who, everyone's got their own standard of what is a cigar aficionado. I do not say that I'm a cigar aficionado because I don't know what that means. I don't know how you can get to that point. The only like labels that I'm aware of that I hold in my mind are like master blender. Who in the industry is a master blender? People like Nick Belillo from Foundation, Don Pepin from My Father Cigars. Once you see what they've accomplished and what they can do, they can be, oh, they, they, they use this percentage of Lajero, this percentage from Jalapa, this from Condega. 
To me, that's a master blender. Cigar aficionado, if that means you smoke on a daily occurrence, maybe a couple times a day, maybe that makes you a cigar aficionado. But I don't know if any amount of information gives you that metal or anything. We do tasting nights here, and I'll normally go around the room once or twice. Hey, what do you think of it? I don't think you should ever, ever push aside advice or almost insight from your customer or from a friend or such like that. But it all depends on where it's coming from. If it's coming from a spirit of encouragement or I want to get more out of this or honesty, then that I will give it 100% validation. I will apply it or I will consider it such like that. When it's coming from a spirit of this is just me projecting what I want onto this cigar or your company or this, and it's not necessarily coming from a beneficial or even a beneficial critiquing end, I feel like a lot of time it's a grain of salt type of situation. I do try to get the Cigar of the Year by Cigar Aficionado inside our humidor at least once, and they say it's this good. It's time to see if the rubber hits the road. And I'd rather, me as a cigar smoker before a retailer, out of curiosity, I want to try it. I want to see if it's that good. But I will not say this is one of the best cigars ever because it got this rating. I think a prime example of that over the last couple of years, we, we've brought in the Cigar of the Years, really mixed responses. I think still to this day in 2015 when they rated 1922 Bijou by my father, Cigar of the Year, I understand the recognition because you ask anybody, it's just a great cigar. The construction's on point, the flavor's on point. And so what really motivates me to bring a particular cigar into that humidor is an experience. Someone comes in for the first time, hey, I'm looking for a Connecticut, I'm looking for a Maduro. I want them to be, I'm gonna take the cigar home if I'm not hanging out here, I'm gonna smoke it, and I want them to associate that cigar with my shop. There was this place up in Oakland in the middle of nowhere off the beaten path, and it was a really, really good cigar. That is what I'm looking for, not, yeah, I've got your Romeo and Julietas, I got your Monte Cristos, and, and all those are good cigars, but that's just gonna get lost in the shuffle, and it's not really a unique experience. It's something like Southern Draw Rosa Sharon. That cigar alone is one of the most popular, or the Liga Zebra by American Viking. It's because it deserves to be smoked. It's coming from bigger names like AJ and Placencia, and it's an awesome experience. It's something that I want other people to have and associate here at the shop. I used to be an MC um, for events and receptions and such. And once again, this is a this is a vehicle to bring people together. It's the people. If this was about moving numbers, moving things off the shelf, retail, I would have been bored a long time ago. And and because it's the, about the community aspect, it's the opportunity to try great tobacco, great process and passion of other people through community. One of the things about our lounge is that we have no televisions. And because I feel like that encringes on that community. There's 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 no TV, there's no big game. And I mean, I'm as much as the next guy, I like watching a movie and I'm smoking a cigar, but I can do that at home. If someone has a garage, they can do that at home. Or if they have a patio. That's not really why I want people here, is just to drop that money, sit in front of a TV, say they watched a good movie, and head out. That's not what I really want. Um, so I feel like it's 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 somewhat of a gamble because when Super Bowl comes around, you can't market, hey, we're doing Super Bowl day. Um, but I feel the rewards outweigh the um, the cons sometimes. I would like to reach people out of state. Uh, I mean, part of what we, we did and we launched, and we, it, it took forever, we finally got, is our OGT Cigar Society, is where we, we have a five pack of a single blend that we either have our regulars pick up or we ship out of state. We've got a guy in Alaska, we've got a guy in Arizona, around California that can't really come to our shop all the time. And then at the beginning of the month, we jump on Instagram, we smoke all together, our members send in requests, so we split the screen, and we're talking back and forth. That type of community is cannot be always reached at a brick and mortar shop. And I want to expand beyond that. It, it, and unfortunately, because we're such a small community and there's not advertising, it's a slow process. It's A lot of it's hearsay, a lot of it's cross-promotional between other manufacturers and such, but what we're able to enjoy ourselves on like the lazy Sundays here at the shop, I want to see how much more that can be done across the nation. And also the education of that. I know for me, what got me into cigars was simply owning a humidor and someone telling me, you can age cigars. And I didn't even know that was a thing. I know you could age wine, um, 
but I didn't know that cigars were, were, were a situation. Then experiencing that, it's more of, I want other people to experience this. If you, every, everyone's heard it before, hey, if you tried the cigar once, you should try it again a second time. You should try it again with a year of it on age, two years. See if that changes and see how different that is. And then you have that uh, similar experience. What I want to do is give a vehicle for people to be able to do that themselves and because now there's time and investment in it and the ex experimentation of trying new things is really what I think a lot of cigar smokers like. Cool. Great people. Good conversation. It's um, nice to get away from home after a long day or work week. Um, you look forward to it. I look forward to it personally to be up here at least once or twice a week. Good friends, good conversation. Eric, of course, is very knowledgeable, knows everything that you're smoking. From day one, he remembers my first cigar that I smoked. Well, the thing that really strikes me about this place is that I've been coming here since Eric opened the place and so I was watching him grow with, with the business. I mean, that's been my biggest thrill coming up here. And aside from the the people and the like-minded thoughts and stuff have been great, but actually watching Eric grow has been the biggest joy for me. OGT, wow, I enjoy it a lot. Um, the scenery, I mean, there there isn't a more gorgeous place out there. The people, you have a an eclectic clientele uh, from all spectrums uh, of political socioeconomic you know you got the blue collar guys you've got millionaires up here yeah and we all sit and we all talk like we're old friends um, and and your events the events are, are amazing um, I've got my my palette you know from where it was when I started it was like Macanudo that was it and now I'm I'm enjoying a filthy Viking it's all together it's it's a great great place to just sit and relax and you have Hawaiian Day Hawaiian Day yeah, it's Hawaiian Day. Uh, it's not Hawaiian Day. Steve, you told me it's Hawaiian Day. Aloha, bro. Well, the biggest thing is I'm I'm a uh, whiskey nerd, um, but I'm only a cigar novice. Uh, so you know, learning about all the new, uh, all the all the stuff here. I was I was a Rockettel smoker only, but now I'm all over the place. And I love it. It doesn't hurt that it's only five minutes away from my house. That's a, that's a big deal, but. Um, there's just such a great atmosphere. Eric, when he runs this place, uh, which is all the time, uh, does such a good job. He really cares about the customers and he has a phenomenal memory for what you smoke. He can remember the very first cigar that I had two years ago when I came in. And you know, I don't even remember what I had yesterday, but it's really, really good. Uh, and it's uh, you know, a good place to tell jokes. A lot of laughing goes on in this place. And for me, that's uh, extra special. Um, and uh, as, as I said, people said so many things about, about the folks and the area and just everything. It's, it makes me feel like uh, it's another, uh, you know, another home, you know. It's not that I like everybody, but I do like, I do like the ability to be with these people. Well, the, the thing that I enjoy the most about coming here is uh, the, the people that I've met. I mean, cigars are the kind of glue that holds everything together, but uh, I've made friends and gotten to know people that I never would have run into in any other way, and uh, that's very valuable to me, so that's what I love about coming here. The environment, uh, basically a really nice place to just lounge, smoke a cigar, chat with people. Uh, still fairly new to cigars in general, and the environment's always been welcoming, and any question, Eric's always answered it, so. What's well, not to like? Great environment, and they're all great humidor, great they're company all every time you come here, old friends and new friends. Uh, and it's just a perfect environment to smoke, to talk, to drink, and to hang out. There's a lot of differences between cigar lounges, uh, none better than others. But the vibe here at OGT is really casual, have a lot of great people, uh, fantastic ownership, Mallory's awesome. Um, just a lot of good people. So we always have an eclectic group of people coming in. We have bikers coming in, we have nurses coming in, we have regular folks coming in. So I think it's a good mix of people and I think the Cigar Lounge is the last bastion of community that we have to enjoy. So we always enjoy having new people come in here 
And that's another thing, it's a very welcoming cigar lounge. New people are always invited to get involved in conversations, and that's Eric's tagline, you know, where conversation begins. So I think it's, he's really hit the nail on the head with that. Um, well, you know, so, sometime you want to go where everybody knows your name. Cheers. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name.